Oh, good morning. It's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFTs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets on Monday's trading and Monday morning trading, the 16th of January 2017. Please be sure to visit Trade Signal signals and market updates from leading providers at www.tradesignal.com. You could download the app at the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, so we started the week off uh, on a negative note, given the fact that Asian markets were down overnight. We had the Shanghai down, the Shanghai down minus 0.2.2% at one time. So bouncing from a 2.2% plunge, the Shanghai hitting a low of 3050 before bouncing back up, back up to 3100. So certainly risk off. We had the Hang Seng down 1% overnight and the Nikkei down 1% as well, down 200 odd points. Okay, so again, Asian Dow certainly down as well. So risk aversion kicking in. Okay, and that's due to numerous reasons. Number one, we had the potential, uh, um, uh, the senior chap at uh, Samsung. His name is Mr. South Korea Prosecutor Secretary of Samsung Hair Court to decide on Wednesday whether to issue a warrant for Lee Jae Young. Apologies if I mispronounce uh, that. Okay, so special prosecutors in Seoul have requested an arrest warrant for the heir apparent of the Samsung Group, South Korea's largest conglomerate, as a corruption scandal that has led to the impeachment of President Park. Gyun Hai and snares one of the country's most powerful corporate figures. So again, certainly not looking good. Okay, any type of fraud, uh, any type of swindle, any type of potential perjury, etc. It certainly isn't good for the company, and certainly isn't good for tech stocks, and certainly isn't good for the Asian markets at all. So again, risk off there. Okay, we also had comments from Mr. Hammond and uh, Miss May over the weekend. Again, confusing investors, confusing traders. Uh, arguing towards a uh, exit of the uh, single uh, Euro European Monetary Union. Okay, and that certainly isn't good either. Okay, so European Union exit uh, again indicates a hard Brexit. And hard Brexit is not something that actually is, helps equities. So again, risk off any potential threat to the eurozone as uh, as a uh, as a functioning unit again is is considered negative and therefore looking for risk aversion. Then we have that pillock, Mr. Trump, the idiot, uh, the moron. Uh, I mean, what else can you say? I mean. Um, Total dimwit. Uh, how he got elected is is totally beyond me. Uh, just absolutely beyond me. But again, it's due to the fluoride in the uh, water supply of the U.S. Uh, a lot of the citizens, unfortunately, don't have very high IQ scores. Okay, but um, uh, oh, thank God we live in Europe anyway. So yes. Yeah, so in terms of the um, uh, Mr. Trump's comments regarding uh, a an attack on BMW, apparently claiming that he wants to uh, impose a 35% border tax. Again, he's changing the game, and that certainly isn't good for American equities, nor is it good for European equities. Any type of trade war or any type of um, reference to a trade war certainly is interpreted as being bearish. Also, with regards to China as well, we also have a uh, rhetoric between China and Trump. Apparently, China is uh, condemning Mr. Trump's comments and saying that uh, the one China policy, obviously, uh, emphasizing that very, very uh, importantly, and also uh, claiming that the gloves will come off. For Mr. Trump, okay, so again, certainly not looking good. Any type of uh, miscommunication, miscommunication, misunderstanding, it certainly does hurt the bottom line, and therefore it's uh, it's a net and negative for equities. Okay, now there may well be other factors that I've missed, but I think that's a good summation for now. In terms of the technical picture, let's bring up the technical picture for you. Let's start off with the uh, German DAX, folks. Okay, uh, I have got the right. No, I've got the wrong. Uh, okay, bear with me. Got the wrong actual charts up here. Okay, so again, let's start off with the technical picture. The FTSE 100 at the moment has held double top resistance. That's interesting. The German DAX certainly has gap lower. Okay, and and in terms of the market understanding, the 60-minute chart has the H and S formation. So again, um, certainly uh, be aware of that. Okay, very very important. I'd say uh, certainly is confirming a potential reversal in European equities. Okay. 10 minute chart, your German DAX certainly languishing at the lows. You're trading between two gaps, okay? So obviously we've gapped down from Friday's pivot high down almost 100 odd points, okay? You have gap fill below 11,520 and then you have a gap fill above at 11,630. So certainly oscillating between those two gaps for the German DAX, okay? In terms of the French CAC, let's bring up the French CAC first and foremost, okay? 60 minute chart certainly held that resistance at 4,920. Certainly flushing ever since, okay? So again, gapping lower. On the French CAC, okay, looking at risk aversion, her holding that key resistance at 4903. You still have the unfilled gap above, okay, so uh, unfilled gap remains open, okay, so you have double top there as well, so just making a note of that, okay, again, you have the unfilled gap below as well, which is at 4860, so the part of the gaps uh, obviously continues. 
Okay, now in terms of the FTSE 100, double top certainly has held intraday. Okay, you do have support down in this 7315 region and then obviously 7305, so watch out for the support below. 60 minute chart at the moment putting in two topping tails. Okay, that certainly isn't looking good, especially with regards to Miss May's comments and Mr. Hammond's comments, certainly from my perspective. Even though the market certainly has been latching onto a weaker uh, sterling, being obviously bullish for the FTSE, it gets to a point where it becomes immune to that, okay? And focus turns back onto fundamentals. Given the speech tomorrow as well, there's a lot of uncertainty going into tomorrow's Mr. May's speech. And Mr. Carney is up by 6.30 today as well, so watch out for sterling there. Given the fact that sterling has dipped below 1.20, it indicates inflation is coming down the road. And Mr. Carney will be vulnerable in terms of fundamentals i.e. whether he's hawkish or obviously dovish. Now, he has attempted the uh, dovish um, uh, cloak, given the fact that uh, we have this greater uncertainty and he wants to alleviate that. But it comes to a point with your, with Sterling now crashing below 1.20, uh, he no longer needs to wear that. Now, obviously, if he starts to uh, issue any type of hawkish comments, and you are looking at Sterling spiking and therefore looking for the FTSE to, to fall even further, given the Brexit uncertainty. So... Certainly doesn't bode well, whichever way you look at it from the FTSE 100's perspective, especially given the fact that you have now oil and gas into resistance, uh, FTSE mining sector into resistance, uh, industrial goods and services into resistance, uh, FTSE banks into resistance, it certainly isn't doesn't bode well. So, as you know, my bias is short, okay, I've currently shorted the FTSE with subscribers and the live analysis service, okay, currently 40 odd points up for this morning, so uh, good morning so far. And let's see how the day obviously plays out. On that note, please be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs and certainly take advantage of thy bonus. Goodbye now.